stuff. There's a lot of it. How do you make sense of it all? Well, we could separate stuff into different groups, then we could base those groups off of the people who would use said stuff. For example, stuff like monster trucks, wrestling, and video games could be classified as boy stuff. And stuff like makeup, romantic movies, and the Treaty of Versailles are undoubtedly girl stuff. So all you gotta do is remember this. To understand stuff, it doesn't have to be tough. You just gotta have enough. And now it's about time I cut out the fluff, so let's get on with the episode. Tips rolling! Girl Stuff Boy Stuff is a Canadian, Hong Kong, American, British, and no I'm not making this up, this is all from the Wikipedia article, animated show from 2002. If you've never heard of it, that's perfectly reasonable. It was never really that popular during its runtime. The show only lasted for two seasons and then faded away into animated obscurity. I actually only stumbled across this show while watching episodes from my Fred's Head review. Wow. I find it only fitting that one weird obscure animated series lead me to another. It's the logical progression, really. Now truthfully, I'm not the most daring, run headfirst into the unknown kind of guy, but I took one look at that title, one look at those deformed shapes they were calling characters, and that was reason enough for me to get interested. So I gave it a go, gave it the old college try, but unfortunately my list of handouts seemingly lacked two piping hot fucks, because this show is a whole lot of not very good. Much like that sentence. So what's the show all about? Well, you got some girls, you got some boys, and they get together and do some stuff. A crap title it may be, but it certainly is accurate. So let's go over the aforementioned boys and girls. Starting with the girl side, we've got Talia. She's into filmmaking, she's apparently the youngest of the group, and uh, she's got purplish hair. Now, if she sounds like a bland, uninteresting character, don't worry, her friends aren't that much better. Next, there's Rianne. She's an environmental and animal rights activist, and can be somewhat of a snob. I'll end up at a good university, and you'll all go to technical schools. Bitch. Finally, there's Hannah, the self-absorbed, valley girl-esque fashion queen of the group. Why isn't everyone asking me about my horrible day thus far? One of my least favorites, but to be fair, I've seen this character done much worse. Hello, pathetic wannabes! <laughs> much, much worse. Moving along to the boys, first off we've got Jason, Talia's older brother. You can really see the resemblance in their pasty, white, blocky faces. Out of all the main characters, I find him to be the least terrible. Come on, champ, sneeze on me. Sure, he's just the generic cool guy, but sadly that makes for one of the better characters on the show. Do you think I'm proud of this? Then you have Simon. He's a geek, and I'm not just saying that because he likes science fiction, comics, video games, wears glasses and it was 2002, but only because of all those reasons. He's easily the worst stereotype out of all the main cast. Still, I wouldn't say that he's the worst character. That title goes to our next candidate, Ben. He's a wannabe cool guy who never gets anywhere. Ben is a loser. Loser! 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 A laughingstock amongst his friend group, he is the embodiment of failure. His character is defined by his own lack of ability to succeed. Ben is no more than the comic relief that finds no relief to his own suffering. He thought his life was a tragedy, but realized it was a comedy, but in reality, he was actually just a tragic comedy. He didn't choose to be this way, but the role was cast onto him from birth. Like Cruel Fate playing its hand in the poker game of life, it was a royal flush every time, and Ben was just playing old maid. Whatever dreams Ben had for himself, whatever aspirations he had to be something greater, and to be accepted by his peers, were crushed the second he was conceived. You will find Ben at 34 years old, lying in a dumpster behind a Denny's, underneath stacks of trash pancakes, abandoned by the world he once tried to entertain, forever cursed to lament his own crushed dreams. That was Ben. But to put it simply, I don't really like him. He's kind of irritating. And there you have the Sinister Six that is the main cast, and in summary, they're just as flat as they look. Sure, they're not the most abysmal characters ever to be put on TV, but they're no more than a mishmash of bland, dated stereotypes. Now, although it's probably apparent to the majority of viewers, for those of you watching this video without the aid of functioning eyes, allow me to assure you that yes, this show is ugly as sin. It probably speaks for itself, but I'm going to elaborate anyway. It's an interesting kind of ugly, the kind that you'd poke with a stick and would raise many questions such as, why does this exist? How does this exist? Can I have some ketchup? 
who looked at this and thought it was okay. The characters are so blocky and jagged, their designs are so bland and flat. Pair this with their bold elementary school color schemes and you effectively have a first grader's attempt at abstract art. And they're even uglier as kids. I mean, look at their heads. Even by this show's low standard of quality, that is horrendous. And how come their head size doesn't carry over into their teenage years? Apparently in this universe, your head deflates with age. Guess it's just a part of growing up. Now, my complaints aren't to suggest that simple designs can't be appealing. An example I'd give of simple done well is with South Park. Even with their somewhat stiff animation, the character designs are smoother and more consistent. But why exactly is that? Well, that's in part due to the roundness of their designs. Now, I'm no professional artist, but from what I've read, rounded lines and corners are more appealing to the eye. They're easier for our eyes to process, and they allow for a smoother flow of information. When used as containers, rounded corners point inwards and towards the center. This is why using a circle for a character's head is very common. It helps bring attention towards the face. With short blinds and corners, they're better suited to more detailed designs. With girl stuff, boy stuff, the designs are both angular and underdeveloped. It's a lose-lose situation. I've already established that the main characters are flat stereotypes, but if you have flat characters and put them in an interesting world or scenario, you can still have a good story. Unfortunately, the show falls flat in this area as well. The episode plots range from hanging at the arcade, to the girls learning how to skate, being homesick, and even going to a science convention. For an animated show of this era, these scenarios are pretty par for the course. The show's writing is a collection of awkward teen interactions, lame jokes, and predictable morals. Sometimes morals are repeated across different episodes, such as, don't abandon your friends for seemingly cooler people. One of the more notable episodes to me was The Big Switch. It's an episode about group dynamics. Ben tries to change his role in the group from the jester to the cool guy. As a result, the universe is thrown out of balance, and really, it amounts to everyone impersonating someone else. Not a bad episode, to be honest, but I have to question the moral of the story. Don't throw off the group dynamic or all hell breaks loose? Your group role is set in stone and can never be changed? Wow, I guess Ben really was born to fail. Another annoying facet of this show are its cutaway jokes and fantasies, the moments where a character will imagine how a particular scenario will play out. These cutaways range from unfunny to weird to ethically questionable. Certain episodes have more than others, and they can be kind of irritating, especially when there's a string of them within a few scenes. I noted their frequency in the first episode, and I was initially worried that all the episodes were going to be like this. Thankfully, that wasn't the case. I mean, the rest of the show's problems are still there, but it could have been worse. I mean, one less bandage to put on. In conclusion, Girl Stuff Boy Stuff is not very good. Amongst all its design and writing issues, my biggest grievance with the show is how uninspired it is. It's cliched and corporate to the point of lacking any sort of unique identity. There were many other shows of its time that were just more interesting and engaging. Even the bad shows of its time had more distinguishable features, like you'd remember them for how bad they were. Girl Stuff Boy Stuff is the cartoon equivalent of a plain bread slice. It's not that bad in and of itself, but it lacks any sort of flavor, and there's much better to be had. And with that, I've said my piece. So, as always, I'm Andy B. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if I make another, I'll see you then. Take it easy.